This is tape number two of the program 10-1B on the IBM Selectric typewriter. It covers the final portion on the discussion of positive power in the IBM Selectric typewriter. Specifically, it covers the cycle clutch or the print clutch. Slide number 45. Your answer to the last question should have been the cycle clutch check paw, which is mounted at the point indicated by the green pointer. Let us now engage in a brief overview of the operation of a clutch. Just as important as the understanding of the function of the cycle clutch latch is the understanding of how a clutch spring is first distended, stretched, or opened and then how it is held, distended, stretched, or opened. You should treat the following information just as meticulously as you treated the information discussing the function of the clutch latch. Once the sleeve, the ratchet, or the disc of a clutch has stopped against the latch, the right end, or simply one end of the clutch spring, can no longer continue to rotate with the cam or the shaft. The cam, or the shaft, however, will continue to rotate because of the momentum it has acquired while the clutch was closed or engaged. As the cam or the shaft continues to rotate because of its momentum or inertia, the clutch spring is opened or stretched. All the while, the cam or the shaft keeps rotating top to the front of the machine. After a certain amount of this rotation, the check paw falls behind the tooth of the check paw ratchet on the left side of the cycle shaft. The same occurs with the other clutches, where after the disc or sleeve stops against the latch or the release arm, the cam continues to rotate until the check paw engages with the check ring. Once this has happened, the spring tension has already become trapped because the cam or the shaft can no longer rotate top to the rear because the check paw would prevent it. At this point in time, however, the shaft or cam has not yet quit rotating top to the front of the machine. Somebody has to actually stop it from rotating too far. Slide number 46. After every printing operation, the cycle shaft is stopped from rotating too far by the step indicated here by the red pencil. This step on the side of the cycle clutch latch restoring cam is referred to by the name of cycle clutch overthrow stop. In reality, however, it takes more than this step in order to stop the cycle shaft. When the cycle clutch sleeve is stopped by the cycle clutch latch, the latch obviously also stops the step in the sleeve indicated by the green pencil. The continued rotation of the cycle shaft will eventually cause the step indicated by the red pencil to stop against the step indicated by the green pencil. So, the cycle clutch latch has to stop first the cycle clutch sleeve and then, indirectly, the whole cycle shaft. In the case of the ratchet clutches, the overthrow stop is simply the outside corner of the opening in the clutch disc. But the overthrow stop for the printing mechanism is adjustable. After the overthrow stop has interrupted the top to the front rotation of the shaft or the cam, the clutch spring starts acting on the shaft or the cam, trying to turn it back top to the rear so as to allow the spring to collapse again. This is going to be possible only for as long as the check paw allows it. As said before, the spring tension is then literally trapped in the clutch, with the latch holding it on one side and the check paw on the other. The motor runs idle until the operator comes along and releases the latch again. The spring then collapses, closing or engaging the clutch, and the whole thing starts all over again. When the clutch is fully assembled, the clearance between the overthrow stop on the cycle clutch restoring cam 
red pencil, and the step on the cycle clutch sleeve, green pencil, when the cycle shaft is resting against the check paw, should be approximately one quarter of a millimeter. This is achieved by the angular positioning of the cycle clutch latch restoring cam, using, of course, the cycle clutch latch as the fixed point. It is most important to mention here that the cycle clutch overthrow stop does not only stop the cycle shaft at the end of the printing operation. It stops the whole printing mechanism, which comprises the cycle shaft, the filter shaft, and the print shaft. We repeat, it is a fallacy to think of the cycle clutch as the clutch driving the cycle shaft only. The cycle clutch is in reality our printing clutch or print clutch. And all mechanisms having to do with printing are driven by it. Think of the cycle clutch as the printing clutch and it will help you understand the mechanism. Slide number 47. On early level or level one machines, the overthrow stop looks like this. The difference between the two styles is minor. The cycle clutch latch restoring cam, indicated by the blue pencil, is held by screws, red pencil, which screw into the clutch clamp. On level one machines, the restoring cam is simply positioned outside the clutch clamp. While this may make the clutch easier to adjust and separate its steps, this mechanism works just as well as the later model. Slide number 48. Let us now take the clutch apart by loosening the cycle clutch clamp, as shown here. Slide number 49. If you're working with a level one machine, notice that the left end of the cycle clutch spring, indicated by the red pencil, is positioned into the slot indicated by the blue pencil. Needless to say that this is where it goes when you reassemble the mechanism. Slide number 50. If your cycle shaft is of a recent serial number machine, the minus five cam will be marked with a small scribe line as the one indicated here by the green pencil. This scribe line is used as a reference mark for the preliminary mounting or assembling of the cycle clutch spring. The lug indicated by the yellow pencil is to be aligned with this mark. Notice that the lug indicated by the yellow pencil is substantially longer than the lug indicated by the red pencil. In the event that your cycle shaft cam does not have the scribe mark, simply line up the long lug of the cycle clutch spring with one of the lowest spots of the minus five cam and you will be just as well off. The lug indicated by the red pencil fits into the window on the sleeve. Under the green pencil we have the cycle shaft arbor or the driven arbor of the cycle clutch. Slide number 51. After we have preliminarily positioned our cycle clutch spring, we also position, still on a preliminary basis, our cycle clutch restoring cam and our cycle clutch clamp. The slot of the cycle clutch restoring cam, red pencil, should be lined up with the slot on the cycle clutch clamp, yellow pencil. And the clamp should be lined up with the hole or the high lobe of the minus five cam. It is immaterial which one of the minus five lobes you use. They are the same. At this point, we ask you to make a deliberate effort to rotate the spring only. When the whole clutch is assembled and out of the machine. Of course, first you have to loosen the clutch clamp. Then, in order to turn the spring top to the rear, it is necessary to apply the turning force to the right end of the spring until the left end of the spring slips top to the rear by the distance which we want. To rotate the spring top to the front, we go to the left side of the clutch spring. And there, we apply top to the front turning force to the left lug of the clutch spring. 
As we apply the force, we watch the right end of the spring. Once it changes its position, we know that the spring slipped on the arbor. We can summarize this by saying that if we want to change the lateral position of the clutch spring, we had better apply opposite torque on both ends of the spring. We would need two hands or two tools for that operation. When we only want to change the angular position of the clutch spring, however, we apply the torque in the direction desired for the change onto the spring end which tends to open the spring or expand the diameter of the spring. Torque applied to the other side just plain will not work because the tendency will be that of tightening the spring rather than allowing it to slip and to change its angular position. We conclude that for the change of the angular position of the clutch spring we need only one tool to apply torque to the end of the spring which tends to open the spring. Be sure to review this explanation carefully. You will need it when it comes to the adjustment of your angular position of the cycle clutch spring. Slide number 52. While the cycle shaft is still out of the power frame, you should also take time to examine the cam followers for the cams located on the cycle shaft. The red and the green pencils point at the rollers which are part of the tilt and rotate bale, also known as the positive five rotate bale or the positive latch bale. When the cycle shaft is properly mounted and when we wish to use the bale, we must check whether both rollers are actually making contact with the bale at the same time. You might also take some time to check the pivot point for the plus five rotate bale and find that the right side of the pivot shaft can be adjusted so as to enable us to establish physical contact between the plus five cams on both sides of the cam follower. Before you attempt to reinstall the cycle shaft, make sure that the minus five cam follower is lowered into its latched position. If it is not latched, it will interfere with your cycle clutch or cycle shaft installation. Now stop your tape layer and proceed with the reinstallation of your cycle shaft. Remember that the straight edge of the cycle shaft bearing plate should be positioned vertically in the machine. Slide number 53. With this slide, we begin the sequence of adjustments of the clutch which drives the printing mechanism and which IBM calls cycle clutch. After the cycle shaft bearing plate has been properly secured by its screws, we must check the end play of the cycle shaft. The purpose of this check is that of reducing the clearance between the driving arbor and the driven arbor of the cycle clutch to a minimum, so as to prevent the inadvertent drawing of a clutch spring coil into the space between the arbors. To enable us to perform this check, it is most important that we allow space between the cycle shaft gear and the cycle shaft bearing plate, as shown by the red pencil. The very simple rule for the installation of the cycle clutch gear is that it should be laterally lined up with the lower idler gear so as to produce maximum engagement between the teeth of the two gears. Slide number 54. On new style machines, the end play of the cycle shaft is reduced to a minimum by the lateral position of the indicated collar. On older machines, we have to install shims between the bearing plate and the check pawl ratchet. It should not be much more than one-tenth of one millimeter. You'll find that this adjustment is given or depicted in frame number one of your adjustment manual. Slide number 55. Now loosen all of the gears which have set screws. They are the print shaft gear, the cycle clutch gear, and the filter shaft gear. Then adjust the position of the lower idler gear so that it provides maximum engagement between the cycle clutch gear, the lower idler, and the filter shaft gear. 
This is done in order to reduce the backlash of the gears to a minimum. After you have fastened the lower idler gear, spin it once or twice to make sure that you have not created any binds for the gear train. Stop your tape layer. Slide number 56. Repeat the procedure for the upper idler gear. Remember, minimum backlash, no binds. Stop your tape layer. Slide number 57. Now spin the whole gear train. It should feel snug and a bit draggy, but it should not have one bit of a bind. Stop your tape layer again. Slide number 58. Now set up your hooverometer so that the lower edge of the slide coincides with the number 3 scribe line. Be sure that the slide of your hooverometer is mounted in the same way as the hooverometer being shown here. We're going to use the hooverometer in order to adjust the vertical position of the cycle clutch latch. Slide number 59. Make sure that the filter shaft is rotated so that the groove does not interfere with the measurement being performed here. The distance from the pivot point of the cycle clutch latch to the filter shaft, the top of the filter shaft that is, the distance from the pivot point of the cycle clutch latch to the upper edge of the print shaft should be such that the hooverometer slide set on the number three scribe line just touches the upper edge of the print shaft. Slide number 60. If the position of your cycle clutch latch happens not to have the required condition, these are the bracket supporting screws which when loosened will allow you to change the vertical position of the cycle clutch latch. Slide number 61. The vertical position of the cycle clutch latch can be off in two ways, causing two different kinds of problems. When the position of the cycle clutch latch is too high, at the point indicated by the red pencil, the horizontal surface or upper edge of the cycle clutch latch is not flush with the flat surface of the step on the cycle clutch sleeve. In other words, the two surfaces form an angle which opens towards the front of the machine. The possible malfunction resulting from this condition is that of extra cycles or uncalled for cycles of the cycle clutch. The cycle clutch latch may at time be literally cammed out of the way of the cycle clutch sleeve. At the time when the latch has to take the impact of whatever is left of the momentum of the cycle shaft. The machine will then type an uncalled for underscore or an uncalled for hyphen. This condition is called flicking. When the position of the cycle clutch latch is too low, the effect is opposite. The step of the cycle clutch sleeve now develops so good a bite onto the upper surface of the cycle clutch latch that the latch becomes sluggish in getting out of the way of the sleeve when it is supposed to. This condition must also be avoided, particularly since it affects the touch of the machine, and this might make the operator quite unhappy. Slide number 62. Now tighten the cycle shaft gear, making sure that it is lined up with the lower idler gear, as demonstrated. Stop your tape layer. Slide number 63. After you have tightened the cycle shaft gear, turn the cycle shaft into one of its two check paw positions, which means that the check paw should be engaged with a step of the ratchet, or on newer machines, the edge of the opening in the left plus five cam, as shown here. With the cycle shaft rotated top to the rear as far as possible. 
Slide number 64. Now rotate the filter shaft so that the distance between the leading edge of the cam and the step of a depressed character interposer is approximately equal to one quarter of one millimeter. Then allow for just a very small amount of end play for the filter shaft and tighten the filter shaft gear. Slide number 65. Now line up the print shaft groove with a dimple indicated by the red pencil and then allow for a very small amount of end play for the print shaft and tighten the print shaft gear set screws. The very small amount of end play for the print shaft and for the filter shaft should be just enough to enable you to be sure that no bind is developed in the system because of your timing of the gears. This timing of the print shaft gear is only the preliminary timing of the print shaft. We will study the fine timing of this gear when we study the type element detenting mechanism. With these steps out of the way, we have made the preliminary adjustments of the printing mechanism. Only after these steps have been carried out can we begin to adjust the cycle clutch proper. In order to review this segment of our presentation, you should return to slide number 53. Once again, these steps are the preliminary adjustments of the cycle clutch. Only after these steps have been carried out can you begin to adjust the cycle clutch proper. Slide number 66. Now reconnect the latch links. On the new machines the clevises should be adjusted so that there is no possible pulling of the link without also pulling the selector latch. At the same time, be sure not to prevent the selector latch from fully engaging with the positive latch bail. On the older machines, allow for a maximum of one quarter millimeter overlap of the latch going beyond the rear surface of the positive latch bail. More about this will be covered in our training program number 10-3 on the IBM Selectric typewriter. At this point, please invert the position of your sound cassette so as to continue by playing cassette number two, side two.